Okay, folks, Alec Pierce, Venti Scuba, you're looking at the King of Valves. Doesn't have a crown, but it has everything else. <laughs> this is it, the ultimate valve. Now, valves today, are just, they're just an on-off valve. They're about as common as kitchen taps, turn them on, turn them off, you know. But uh, valve development over the years uh, changed a great deal from the old-fashioned pillar valves that would freeze up, and stick, uh, and break and so on, and developed until we have what we have today. But in the meantime, there were a lot of pretty unique valves made. Let me tell you about it. Well, this one I've chosen. I've just chosen this one simple valve, and I'm going to call this the ultimate, the number one, the penultimate, the king of valve, whatever you want to call it. I like this valve. First of all, it's heavy. Weighs about, it weighs about, I bet just four pounds, Kevin. I think it's more, more than a three-pound weight. Not that that makes it good. It certainly doesn't make it bad to have it solid. It is solid brass, chrome plated, beautifully made, made by a big brand name company whose name Skeeper Pro doesn't really matter. And uh, this, is a, this is a modern valve. You could use it today in your tank if you wanted to. It's a three quarter inch, down to three quarter inch uh, O ring seal. So it could be used in any, any uh, steel, old steel, a 72 cubic foot tank or, or um, uh, uh, um, aluminum tank and many of the new steel tanks as well as long as you use three quarter inch beautiful valve so why do i call it the king of valves well a few things about it first of all not just the fact that it's made by skipper pro which implies quite rightly so extremely high quality great performance but also because it has wonderful features first of all skipper pro valves this valve in particular had one of the very finest operating mechanisms made now i don't know if you if you have watched some of my tech tips my playlist tech tips where we've looked at valves and you may or may not know, if you haven't done so, that turning this knob does not directly control the airflow. There is a separate threaded seat in the valve. That seat is what turns the air on and off. And it takes a fair bit of effort to move that seat. But what they've done here is this knob has a, it's called a spindle, or sometimes it's called a fork on it. It fits into that threaded high pressure seat. When you turn this, you're just turning the fork. It's quite easy. This knob, this knob, the, the fork is sealed with an O ring seal. It's quite easy to turn this. And as you turn this in or out, it moves that threaded seat in and out with a great deal of, this takes the effort. So it's very easy, very smooth to turn. It doesn't jam, doesn't get jammed open, doesn't get jammed closed. And you know, that's a very effective job of opening and closing the valve. So performance is one thing. It does a great job as a valve. Secondly, this valve, not, this is not something that you necessarily want today. doesn't matter if you have it or not, but you don't need to have it today. This valve has a J mechanism on it, a reserve mechanism. This is a spring-loaded reserve mechanism. Hear it? That's right. So as was very, very common in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s, many, many divers wanted to have the J valve. At one time, it was mandatory. When I started diving in the late 50s, early 60s, this J valve was mandatory. We didn't have pressure gauges, submersible pressure gauges. We didn't have computers, of course. We didn't have any mechanisms that would tell us how much air we had in our tank once we went into the water. So we would measure the air when we went in to be sure the tank was full. And then we would guesstimate, based on experience and a little bit of rough math, <laughs> how long that tank would last, is depending on the depth and so on. And we get we were pretty good, pretty good, but it was quite common for us to miscalculate or maybe have a little more effort underwater than we had planned on and run out of air. However, this reserve mechanism, when you ran out of air, allowed you to then reach back and pull this down, not with your fingers, there was a rod that went down from this, in some cases a cord, but more commonly a rod called a J-rod. Yeah. And then you would pull this down and that gave you an extra few minutes of air. 300 psi to be exact which you know would would be you know depending on your depth anywhere from one minute to five minutes so this valve had a built-in reserve j uh, j type reserve it was called another fantastic feature of this valve what else did it have well when we mentioned i mentioned that we did not have pressure gauges underwater so there was no way of knowing how much air you had in your tank. You had to have a separate pressure gauge. It was just a gauge on a yoke. It wasn't waterproof, and you would check the tank before and after the dive. Well, this valve, let's take a look at the back of this valve. Look on the back. Can you zoom in there, Kevin? And can you see that little rod mechanism on the left-hand side, on the J-rod side? 
there's a little rod, a little groove in there with a rod in it. And if you look carefully at the side of the groove, you'll see E at the bottom means empty. Halfway up, half. At the top, F for full. And it's very simple. There's a little pin in there. I think you can see it, Kevin. Can you see the pin in there? Yeah. Very simple. When this valve was inserted into the tank, right, there is the standard spigot or pitot tube. It's a little spigot that sticks down into the tank that just allows scuba tanks because it turn up. If there's any water or debris, it, it doesn't go into the valve and into the regulator and plug the filter. That's all that is on there for. But also on that bottom part, see the little hole right there? A uh, high pressure air from the tank would also go through that hole. And that hole, if you look, you see is directly below that pin. That's right. So when you filled your tank at the dive store with this valve in it, that little pin is pushed up by the 3,000 PSI. In this case, let's say 3,000 by the air pressure. Pushed right up to the end of the pin is up here at the top. Upwards says F. And you could look at it and say, oh, yeah, my tank's full. As you started to breathe, of course, removed air from the tank, the pressure would drop, and that pin would slowly go down, one half, until eventually it got to the bottom and it said empty. So there's a built-in pressure gauge. Now, let's be honest. How practical is that? Not very. If you, if you didn't have one of those $10 surface pressure gauges, pressure checker we call them, for checking your tank pressure, this might be valuable. Because before the dive, you could take a look and say, okay, my tank's full. Let's go, guys. You couldn't use this underwater for obvious reasons. But it was a pretty neat feature. So, all in all, this was just a fantastic valve. Easy to operate, solidly built, reserve mechanism, pressure gauge, that's your little uh, uh, pressure relief, safety pressure relief. Now, all valves had that. Just a wonderful valve. That's why I call it the king of valves. I thought you might see that and see some of those features that uh, these uh, of the ultimate valve from the 60s included. That's it. The King of Valves. Talk to you again real soon. Alec Pierce from Venti Scuba.